Soldier of Fortune was released 18 years ago. I was 9 years old when Soldier of Fortune came out. Kids that are now 18 were born the year Soldier of Fortune came out. If you didn't feel old or young before, you should feel old or young now. It was developed by the legendary developer Raven Software, who unfortunately have just sort of been melded into becoming part of the Call of Duty team, which is disappointing considering the good games they used to make in the past. That's not a knock on Call of Duty, but Raven Software used to make some genuinely interesting, unique games, and now they just kind of help with Call of Duty. Soldier of Fortune was one of those unique games, and it has a little bit of a legacy for sort of pioneering a specific kind of shooter. Saddam himself, and my man General Amu. Here we go. The story in Soldier of Fortune is really nothing to write home about. Raven Software acquired the rights to make a game of Soldier of Fortune magazine, so it comes with a lot of old military tropes that nowadays are really laughable. The main character is a generic white dude mustachioed man that was supposed to be badass special ops type guy back in the day, but now it's just kind of laughable and dumb. Keep in mind, this is the year 2000, and the conflict between the US and certain sections of the Middle East, say Iraq, was almost at its peak. 9-11 happened one year after this, and the conflict did not suddenly come out of nowhere with 9-11. So it's no surprise that this is tied into most of the story in Soldier of Fortune. To be honest, the story doesn't really mean anything. It is kind of just a silly B-action movie story. The plot is very simple though. It involves a South African exile, Decker, stealing nuclear weapons from a storage facility in Russia and selling them to various nations. This is effectively a setup to give you different environments to go shoot enemies in, say, New York City, Sudan, Siberia, Tokyo, you get the point. The story may be dumb and rather laughable, but in all reality it's just dressing to give you these different environments, which is good for the game in the end. Judging the graphics of a game that came out 18 years ago is not straightforward. You can't judge it by how games look now, obviously games that come out now look much better. But judging it off of games that came out back then, it's kind of a decent looking game. It definitely doesn't look bad, it definitely doesn't look great, but really the biggest thing that hurt Soldier of Fortune is that Half-Life 1 came out two years before it, and you cannot compete with Half-Life 1 during that era. Half-Life 1 was the crisis of that era. Nothing looked as good as Half-Life 1, and everything by comparison just doesn't look very good at all. The result is that it kind of looks like a standard Quake Engine game. Again, it doesn't look bad, there's some good texture work and some good modeling of the weapons, but it doesn't look great either. It's certainly playable, and again, doesn't look bad, but it's kind of run in the mill. Alright, here's where we get to the more interesting stuff. This is what people remember from Soldier of Fortune. The gameplay. Remember when I said Soldier of Fortune sort of pioneered a specific genre of first person shooter? Well the genre I was talking about doesn't really have a name, but it's the ultra gory section of shooters that nowadays is really carried by say Killing Floor. Soldier of Fortune was one of, if not the very original game to have a full gore system and really model weapons accurately and just make them sound punchy and satisfying. Games didn't really do that before. For its time, the gore this game had was a bit controversial. It ran on the Ghoul engine, which is just kind of a modified IT Tech 2 engine, and it really, really focused on graphic violence. Each character model had 26 zones in total that could be shot and dismembered in different ways. This has a direct impact to the gunplay. The guns recoil a good amount, they sound loud, in fact most of them sound like you're firing a cannon rather than just a firearm. And after that cannon goes off, a limb will go flying across the room, or they, they'll be laying on the ground yelling for 10 years. It's graphically violent intentionally, and that really does play into the gunplay, and it is satisfying in a morbid way. But this also hurts the game in a way, because it pioneered this, and a lot of games after it followed suit, doing very similar things. Nowadays, if you're going to play a game that's really focusing on gore, what are you going to want to play? Soldier of Fortune or Killing Floor? Personally, I'm going to play Killing Floor because it sort of aims to do the same thing, but is just more advanced and has learned over the years. Really, Soldier of Fortune's biggest problem today isn't that it didn't age well because it did, 
It's just that other games does what it does better. That's not to say you can't play it today and enjoy it, but it's gonna feel really similar. It's a very linear, straightforward shooter with a lot of gore. As you're going down that linear path, you know where enemies are going to be shooting you from, and you're going to get the feeling that you've kind of played this game before. And again, you can still have fun with it, the shotgun in particular is really satisfying to use, but it's just going to kind of be a mindless, run-of-the-mill shooter to you nowadays. I still give it a lot of credit because it sort of pioneered this, and it does have a legacy in that regard. After all, it is the original, but it's not really something I truly want to go out of my way to play nowadays. I don't know how to classify this game 18 years later. It's an odd case where it actually does age quite well, but other games just aged a little bit better, if that makes sense. Regardless, it's still a fantastic game, it's been added on GOG now, so if you want to get it and play it today, then I would totally recommend it. That about sums up my review of Soldier of Fortune, thanks to all of my patrons and everyone that subs over on Twitch. If you guys want to go give me a follow over on Twitch, I have a link down below in the pinned comment. I also have a Discord, which I forget to mention pretty often. I post announcements over there when I post videos and when I'm streaming, so it's just easier to keep up. So if you want to join that stuff, link down below in the pinned comment. Hopefully I will see you guys over there, and thanks for watching this video.